Hello YouTube, I'm Thai from GermTG and uh, uh, some weeks ago I did a video called Dragon's of the Deck Ideas and Good Build the Run Cards Part 1. So I'm gonna do Part 2 now, uh, right after the Pro Tour. I have some ideas and uh, stuff I thought we might uh, go through and um, yeah, you know, I hope you last, uh, liked the last video and uh, let's do another one of these and have some more crazy decks. I don't know, maybe. We've seen some of these. But anyway, the first deck I'm gonna talk about is Waste Not Dark Deal Combo. A deck that I'm building right now that is super, super cool to me. It goes very unnoticed. Uh, I mean, people aren't really paying attention to this deck and... Um, you know, it, it gets a lot of new support and one of the reasons for that is there's now like three different one mana removal spells. You know, so we have Duress, Thoughtseize, and the Spice. And that plus Dark Deal is 16 discard spells with Waste Not, which is pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know if you would play the full playset of, um, of the Spice, but you know, maybe, probably, I don't, I don't really know, but I, I, would, I would try that to begin with and then like fine-tune after the meta thing but another reason to like, like play this deck is you can go zombie tribal which with the risen executioner necromancer stockpile and you know a lot of great zombies is just a great idea you can play tassiger which is a human shaman but it helps with uh, like card draw and stuff it's a lot of value and uh, has delve so it's always cheap then you have Gurmog Angler, which is a zombie, you know, also 5-5 five, five for 1 mana, it's pretty okay. Salt Emissary, gets a lot of value. Uh, Shambling Goblin, also gets a lot of value. You all have all these great zombie cards, and another card that is a zombie is CDC Undead Vizier. And that to me is just great, because you can sacrifice a zombie like a Shambling Goblin, you know. It's a 2-2 thanks to Risen Execu Executioner. You can block, uh, uh, you can have it fight with like a, a Fleeceman Lion and then when it dies to CDC, just kill the Fleeceman Lion and so on. That's just uh, like an example that I mean, that seems pretty great to me. And uh, CDC plus all those when it dies cards like Salt Emissary, you get to manifest the top card of the library, library. That seems great. And you can go search for. Um, like anything, waste not another CDC, like a dark deal, or it's an executioner, a necromancer stockpile. You can even go search for another card that I might include, and that's Damnable Pact. And that is so great because, you know, we have when when you have like get get gotten rid of all cards in your opponent's hand and they're top decking, that is not a great spot for you because you have so many useless cards that you can't do anything about. You know, just have them because they're sorcery speed, every one of them. So, why not with Damnable Pact make them discard, make them draw like seven cards and lose seven life on their uh, on your end step, no, on their end step, and then on your turn just get rid of all those cards again and do the same all over again. And you can search for Damnable Pact with CDC, and that to me just seems like crazy good. So you have like two ways of finishing and that's just discarding and, and shipping away and you can play or you can play like Gurma Gangler or just um, an army of 3-3 three, three zombies. You know and that seems that is super good and Necromancer Stockpile and the Waste Not provides great like value. Necromancer Stockpile you can pay what is it 2 and discard a card to draw a card and if the, the discarded card was a zombie you get um, a 2-2 two, two zombie. Uh, creature token onto the battlefield that is just that is super good with the zombie thing and with the discard thing you can discard your own cards like that you don't need you can like filter through your deck that just it seems like it has some really good like combo feel to it and I like that a lot and um, you can either play like as a meta hate mid-range deck with CDC Tassiger, Gurmag Angler or you can have like a combo dark deal waste not just on turn three or something you get to have you get like all your crazy things 
directly you get so a lot of value. I'm sorry about, about that noise. You can also, with the Tasker, you splash blue, so you can also have negates and anticipates to filter through your deck. And that, to me, is just, uh, that seems extremely good. You can have a negate or disdainful stroke or anything if, you, if you're playing against Albsan or maybe a whip deck or against the other control, deck, the, uh, control decks like the blue black one. This seems really great as well. So let's talk about the next deck and that is blue white control. And we've seen a lot of blue black control lately, like a lot, a lot. And this deck might like take over. I don't know. After the Pro Tour, we've seen that the uh, blue black decks, there were three of those in the top eight, which is crazy. And 90% of the blue black decks made uh, day two and uh, was a lot of percent of the field. Um, but there was one guy uh, who played blue white control. I can't remember his name, but he's pretty famous for playing control. And, um, you know, he. The, the crazy thing about that deck is it made like it had the same standard results as um, the blue black ones. So, if he had made a better limited run, he would have made top eight. Um, so, it's important to check those things out as well. Um, which decks had the best standard uh, like record? And this deck is just so cool because uh, of the new uh, support it gets. It's uh, like with uh, with the uh, Narset and uh, the Command and Dragonlord Ojutai and Anticipate. Anticipate is just a lot of great things. You have Dragonlord's prerogative. Um, and you la you have so many good new things. Silumgar Scorn even. You can play some of the dragons like Dragonlord Ojutai and Icefall Regent, and then just Silumgar Scorn, because Silumgar Scorn is just an insane card. It's counterspell. Or four spike, but mostly like counter spell and four spikes work works like a, a lot of the times, especially um, against the mid range decks because they just tap out for the things every turn and just uh, curve into something. And this deck seems so great because you can have a lot of different finishers: the old ones, new ones, Pearl Lake, uh, Dragon Lord, uh, Regent, and you can just filter through your deck and just play that like the ex extremely controlly control, the, the, the like original control deck. You can have um, the Devouring Lights or the Banishing Lights and the End Hostilities and uh, all that things. Um, all of those uh, different things and that's just, um, that seems good but it's of course weak against Mono Red because no Drown in Sorrow, no Bile Blight and that is a problem but if you can get past that I think you're in very good shape to uh, win and uh, the guy who played that in the Pro Tour also managed to um, see that and win a lot and the, uh, to me I like rebounding a dig through time with our set that's just too good to ignore so I, in my world either you're playing Esper Control or uh, Blue White Control and I might just try out Blue White Control because it, because it has so uh, much support right now and the command seems like super good. Um, the dragon seems super good. Like anticipate is extremely good, and uh, it has really proven itself. The different cards. So just why not bunch them together and have like a super deck? And for our last deck, um, I have ramp, which like is pretty famous already. You've seen a lot of ramp from uh, uh, in the in the pro tour top eight. There were like three. Mono green devotion decks, and uh, and they managed to get really like good results. Uh, it was also a lot of like dragon, green red dragons, green red ag aggro, which Chris Van Meter won the Star City Games Open Syracuse with. But this deck has some really good potential, and I think Andre Strasky, who came third, um, he really like showed that in a great way because he just ramped into Atarka, which was just the biggest blowout ever. It was crazy. It was absolutely insane. And then you have uh, Ugin, which can just finish games uh, himself. I don't know if he's all too great with the Exile ability, since you play, uh, you often play like a lot, a lot, a lot of creatures. Um, but I mean, he's a really good finisher. He can just 
like uh, lightning bolt people for three and then just minus 10 and, and then you have won like 99% of uh, all times. You have explosive vegetation which is one of my favorite new cards from uh, Dragon Sotek here which is just a crazy good card, I love it. Um, it has beautiful artwork but I mean it's good, it's really good. You can ramp into like crazy Dragon Lord of Tarkas and turn 3-4 or something like that. It's just crazy and you can take like many diff different directions with uh, this deck. You can play Teamer for Sarkin and Broken and Sarkin and Broken I think you just find you have to find like the right deck for him. Uh, the same goes with Ojutai's Exemplars but I mean yeah, you just have to find the right deck and then he's just unbeatable because he is like super good. If you can protect him his plus and minus like one two that's just crazy and this minus eight you can just um, like slam dunk in a Dragon Lord of Tarkas, which is just, I, I mean, it's crazy, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And um, I love that. And you can also have um, graveyard synergies with this, like the reanimator decks. If you play some kind of Whip of Arrow strategy, um, we also have the Endless Obedience, I think it's called, which might work, and the Profound Journey. I don't know. Something like that. You can have one of those cards and just um, like put uh, your crazy big cards into your graveyard somehow maybe with like necromancer stockpile as I talked about something that make, makes you discard cards and you can choose yourself and then you have then you can just whip back the crazy uh, enters the battlefield trigger big monsters every time and just swing for like a bunch like whipping back dragon or the targets five damage with lifelink and then um, eight damage lifelink trample flying and that's just that is pretty much always unbeatable so that was everything for me I hope you liked the video I might make another one and we'll see you guys uh, next time goodbye everyone